So the relationships and dynamics between characters are always compelling um, in your films, Nancy. Thank you. Um, but as a writer, I just wondered what you enjoyed about exploring this heartwarming friendship between Ben and Jules uh, in the intern. Yeah, that's. I'm glad you asked me that <clears throat> because uh, you know I've written a lot of romantic comedies for a lot of years, and at a certain point, I felt like um, if I had to write one more date, I wasn't. I just did not want to write another date. You know, and so this relationship doesn't have those sort of bullet points, you know, of a romantic comedy. And so what I liked about it was it, it, it gave me something new to explore. And also, I don't have any friends. When I was 30, I didn't have any friends that were 70. And the more I wrote it, the more I wished I'd had it. So it became like my dream to have had somebody like this in my life. I know all of, everything about it I liked. I liked the no sexual tension. You know, because an audience counts on that in a relationship in a movie, generally. You know, so, so it's completely not part of the movie, and yet you still care for them so much, I think. They're so good at it. And was that a challenge when you were writing not having sexual tension? No. Because you don't miss it watching the film no, in the least. No, you don't you know? miss it. Um, yeah. You don't miss it, and I never thought about it for a second as a writer. And at first glance, you might expect this to be sort of a fish out of water tale of an old mm -hmm. man in a well, startup culture. Yes, it's, it uh, goes there a little bit, but you know, uh, yes, I've heard that. Some people have said to me, you know, somebody else may have taken this premise and made that half the movie, you know, but I do it for a, a, two minutes, you know, or a very short amount of time, which is natural. And, and I know you mentioned um, some of your own characteristics are in Jules, like her ritual before she takes off um, for a flight. And, um, oh yeah, that's true. And also feeling a bit Hand uncomfortable. Hand sanitizer, I love. Yes. <laughs> Are there other autobiographical <laughs> elements in, in it's there? It's funny, in on the Instagram character? today, somebody wrote to me, because I put up a, a photo of the movie, and I said, hey, once you see the movie, tell me what you think. And this woman said, I really loved, uh, I really loved how what a hard worker she was and how you empowered her, and also her obsessive compulsive disorder, which, <laughs> Frankly, it was not something I intended. I just like hand sanitizer, so I gave her that. And I found until we left the office and went ho home with Jules, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that she was a mother because mm -hmm. she's so good at work and she's also yes. a great mother. And I just wondered how things might have changed for working mums since you wrote uh, Baby Boom, how, how are things different right. in 2015. Right. Well, I'm really glad you said that because that was done on purpose. You know that you don't see her home life or know what you, you take, for some reason, you take stereotypes from other movies and put them into the next movie you see. So when you see a woman who's really good at her job, you assume, oh, she has no guy and whatever. So we don't do any of that. Yes, she's got a husband. Yes, she's got a child. Uh, and the difference between this and Baby Boom is that, um, well, in Baby Boom, her boyfriend left her uh, the harder she worked and when she had a child. And in this film, her husband actually gives up his job and becomes a stay-at-home dad to support her because her business is really taking off in ways that he feels he could go back to his. And also she's the boss in Baby Boom, she was an employee. So I've lived long enough to be able to get to the other side with women, but obviously problems are still there. So I'm not saying it's a problem-free world for women. And you've worked with um, leading actresses like Meryl Streep, Diane Keaton, mm -hmm. Cameron Diaz, Kate mm -hmm. Winslet. Yes. Um, all very accomplished, but have a certain quirkiness, don't they? I just wondered how you um, felt Anne Hathaway fitted into that picture as someone you admire. Right, right, yes. Um, I do, well, you know, they're all, everybody you just said, just as you said them, kind of brought a smile to my face because I love them all so much. And Annie's, I feel, you know, she's the younger version of some of these women. She's a great actress like Meryl. She can be funny and quirky like Cameron. Um, she's innately smart, like Keaton. You know, I, I've just, I've, I feel her, um, anyway, I, don't, I do think she's very good in the movie, and I feel she's, I feel there's a line of women that you can tie together somehow. In my, in my mind, I do anyway. And, Ath and Hathaway just described um, her co-star, Robert De Niro, as a screen legend, even though he doesn't behave like one, um, she said. But um, in, in your mind, what makes him a, a legend? The films. You know, I think his, the parts he's played, he's in Godfather Part Two. he's Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver, he's Raging Bull. That's a legend. These are legendary parts. These are parts young actors today are never going to get. They're never going to have a chance to play these kind of parts. 
It's really sad. He's had an unbelievably great career. And then who would have thought that the guy gets into his uh, 60s and becomes a comedy star? I mean, he's had an extraordinary career. And then makes hugely famous, big, like the Fokker movies are great. And they all hang on him. He's the guy that makes Ben Stiller so funny and he's so funny. And do you think the kind of movies that he was making in the 70s and 80s well, aren't really around really, anymore? They're really not. I mean, they're really not. You know, those were character-driven movies. Raging Bull, if you were to describe the plot or what, it's the character that's so great. It's the character. I mean, the Godfather movies obviously have brilliant plots, but I mean, these are strong, memorable characters. And today, it's really other things that drive movies. They're not character-driven. And if they are, they're smaller indie movies. And he's so humble. He said, um, she may have seen a few of my movies and when, when talking about um, why you cast him. <laughs> and I, was, I think she might have seen one or two, yes. Um, and I know you, you're he's very... He's a comedian. Yes. <laughs> I know you're very much involved in the production design um, of your films. And I know in Ben's house, I believe there's some special artwork there, isn't it? Could you tell me a bit about that? Sure, yes. When we were um, putting the home together for Bob's character, Ben, we... They always bring me art. You know, he's a man who's lived in his house for 40 years, so they have this sort of art show and tell where they show me pieces for his house. And I had just been to Bob's a restaurant at the Greenwich Hotel in New York, and his father's art is all over the hotel, and he showed me quite a bit of it. It's so beautiful. And then I watched the documentary he made on his dad. So I asked him if we could have a couple of pieces for the house because, first of all, it would make him feel like he had history in the house. You know, if he could look around and feel his own dad's work there. I thought it would be great. And I also thought that it would be would have been possible that maybe Ben or his wife had bought one of these pieces as a young couple or inherited it from their parents. So it's not on camera a lot, but I think it really meant something to him. And is that often the way you approach things with the production design thingy, how it might make the actor feel on oh, that yeah, set? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I wanted to, feel, I, don't, I don't ever want them to walk into the set and say, oh, she lives here, you know, or... Something like that. I want them to, yeah, no, I show them all these ideas, too. And similarly with the, the costumes as well. They both have great style, actually, don't they? Right. have those button-down shirts He's that wears Ben very wears. conservative, but yes. yes, yeah, I'm wearing one today in honor of him. Um, yeah, well, wardrobe, of course, I do with them. Production design is not, they're not part of that process, but the costume design is, there's so much a part of it. Um, I did a lot, a lot. I think you're, you think I'm going to say Annie. I did a lot, a lot of fittings with Bob for this movie. And what's really brilliant about his clothes, <clears throat> it looks like he's in a gray suit in every single scene, but they're all different. <laughs> but they're all also the same because that's just who he is. I mean, we've repeated them, but there are four or five different ones throughout the film. But even no one will ever see the movie as much as me. I can't tell the suits apart. And when it comes to chemistry between your leads, is that something you definitely know you have before you start shooting? Or do you ever worry sometimes that it won't, won't be there? Um, uh, I don't worry. That's not one of the things I worry about, but it is something you can't feel in person. But when I saw it, when I saw them on film, I knew right away. I knew right away that we had something with them. You know, they have a very nice bond off camera too. I think that really helps. When people are comfortable with each other, it helps. Yeah, no, you can really feel it. I'm just um, yeah. having spoken to them both. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. It's good to hear. And the age range in the office is obviously something out of the ordinary, but on a film set, it's quite commonplace, isn't it, to have people of different ages and different experiences? I just wondered what you... This more than normal, because there were uh, 80 or 90 uh, people working in that office. I don't think anyone, not too many were over 32, maybe. And then there was me and Robert De Niro and Rene Russo. And everybody else was way, way younger than us. So that, it was a little unusual in that there were so many of them. And all, and all the other speaking parts, all the kids in the office, her business, you know, associate, they're all young, all of them in the 30s. Nancy Myers, thanks very much. Thank Congratulations so much. on the intern. Thank you, thanks. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, hey.